Hi everybody, this is Lonnie Clark, that's for art. I'm standing out in front of the nuclear power plant, the experimental nuclear power plant in Corvallis, Oregon. It's across the street from da -da -da, the EPA, like right across the street. Can you see that? There it is. And I'm standing on this sidewalk, the legal sidewalk. And there it is. And I've been holding up my sign. I've made several videos. I don't know if I'm going to use them all. So I'm just going to keep using my video time until my camera runs out of steam. But I'm standing on, it's on 235th Street, Southwest 35th in Oregon, per hour. So, and I'm just standing right next to my tripod, speaking to you, holding my sign up. And when these people pass, I'll show you what the sign says. The sign says, when scientists lie, people die. And then it has a symbol of a banana with a not equal sign and a radiation sign. So here, I'm going to come out here and Okay, I'm just going to stand right here and talk to you. And uh, hopefully this is a soft enough message that will get people to tell the truth. Uh, I tend to think that soft messages don't work anyways either. I kind of agree with Kevin. Uh, the softness has got us where the fuck we are right now, which is people just accepting the fact that they're going to get canceled. You know, it's really sad. My brother has cancer. My brother lives in Hico, Texas, which is exactly downwind of WIPP. And he got cancer shortly, like he was diagnosed with cancer, I think maybe two months after the WIPP, he got cancer right away. They said, oh, don't worry, we caught it right away, it's benign, it's on his neck, lymphoma cancer on his neck. They did something, gave him some kind of treatment, it went away, and then it came back. And then they did something to him, and now he's got to get radiation again, and chemo. I mean, they, I don't know, I get all confused because I haven't had it yet. But my brother lost all of his hair, so I guess that's radiation. And, um, did you see that? That lady waved at us. I don't know if you can see it. I don't think I have it listed so somebody could actually, you could see anybody. I should, in case we get another person who supports us. Get them on camera! But, um, so anyways, with my brother, he still has cancer. Do you like my sign? They're telling everybody that there's no more radiation come from Fukushima than a banana. That's not the truth. Do you know that that nuclear power plant right there tells the world that there's no more radiation coming into the world from Fukushima than a banana? It's not more harmful than to live in Fukushima than eating a banana. No. That's called nuclear liars. No. So what I'm standing out here for is I want them to start telling the truth. Like, we need to accept the nuclear reality that we're screwed. They don't know how to deal with it, but we need to put more scientific money into fixing it and solving it and instead of just twisting and making people rich by lying to everybody and, oh, gee, you got cancer, and, oh, gee, your kid's mutated, and, oh, uh. gee, we're really sorry, but nuclear didn't cause that, so I'm mm. super, super sick of the nuclear lies. Mm. So, and that's because scientists lie, so I figured the EPA was the appropriate place. I can't oh, blame them because they get all this government money to lie, but these guys... I can blame them. Oh. So this is this was meant at them more, and well, or is this kind of for both? I mean, she Catherine Higley is the one who puts out the nuclear lies. She is the one whose scientific study confirmed to everybody: don't worry, there's no more radiation coming out of Fukushima than a banana. The starfish die-offs off the Pacific in the Pacific, the sardine die-offs, the caribou die-offs, the whales, the seals, 
the polar bears losing their hair. That has yeah. nothing to do with Fukushima. Well, do you happen to have a, a link or some kind of website that you got that from? The because I've never heard of them saying that it's normally a banana, but. Is there a website that I can You can go to her studies at the University of Oregon. She put it out. She's quite proud of herself. She has a private corporation that she runs. It's not actually out of the University of Oregon. She has a private corporation that she gets paid for. You know how they work, the medical industry and the nuclear. They hire a really good professor and help, give them a boatload of money to give them the answers they want. So that's what's happening. But she puts the studies out. It's out there. You can you, E N E News. It's E N E N E W E S. It's pretty easy to know. You can probably find a study there. That's where all the energy. It's called Energy News, right? So all the energy corporations they put their information from the nuclear information and even the coal. You'll find some coal information there too. But mostly nuclear, because nuclear is super out of control. Like. We don't just have Fukushima. You know, in, in Fukushima, we had three melted nuclear power plants that have been pouring radiation into the Pacific Ocean, 100,000 tons every single day since 3.11.11. Still not stopped. Now it's going into the groundwater. Unit 5 had a criticality last week. Unit 4 is a big, gigantic mass. And it's, it's really bad. I mean, it's super... They have not... This is the thing. When we had Chernobyl, they stopped it within six months. It's going on three years, and there was three additional, we had, Chernobyl was only a half core meltdown, but in Fukushima we've had three full nuclear core meltdowns. And then on top of that, in the United States, our own sweet country in New Mexico, we have the WIPP, the nuclear power, it's WIP, it's a processing plant for the waste, that's where they store the waste. About, I think it was March or April, it blew up. And it had big, they were pouring americium all over the south, it's spewing, it's, it's a, and the reason it blew up, they finally discovered, is because somebody put not organic kitty litter in with the nuclear waste. Mm. And it, because it's organic, it interacts with the nuclear stuff, and it's like a ticking time bomb, so they had to like freeze everything, they have like these big huge storage tanks that are supposed to go underground, but they're scared to move them because they're filled with this kitty litter. I mean, it's really bad. I mean... Yeah, and we're not. And the thing is, what the nuclear industry does since World War II, John Goffman, who was a nuclear scientist on the Manhattan Project, he did a 10 year study after Hiroshima of the Japanese, and he studied them for 30 years until the 1960s, from the mid 40s till 65, it was almost 30 years, like 27 years. His study basically said that the International Atomic Agency and the United States military had a, what is basically a 90% rule. They lie about the negative effects of nuclear radiation by 90%, and they deny that radiation causes any problem. And we're kind of sticking, they're sticking to that story to this day. I mean, if you ask these people or these people if anybody died in Fukushima, they'll say, no, nobody died. Go tell that to the children who have gotten cancer. I mean, I don't know if you're aware, but in Japan, instead of telling the truth to the people, they pass secrecy laws. People are not allowed to talk about nuclear radiation. They have socialized medicine. If you walk into your doctor in Japan and say, my nose is bleeding and my eyes are bleeding and I think I've been negatively affected, they will not see if you say it's from radiation. But if you just say your nose is bleeding or your eyes are bleeding, they'll say, fine, you have a mystery disease. Like, personally, I'm super sick of it. And, and, and I call Barbara Boxer, I call Ron Wyden, I call Jeff Merkley, I call Pete DeFazio. And, you know, I want them to get actively engaged in demanding real, real science. Because the fact is, we're stuck. This is the age of fission. We're not just fusion, it's fission. The problems with nuclear right now are out of our control. We don't have the science because, I mean, I don't know if you're aware, but the nuclear industry is mostly subsidized by, the United, by, by every government's taxpayers. So, like, we, 80, more than 80% of our energy budget goes to nuclear. And the reason they do it is they want nuclear weapons. It's part of the war machine. Because the waste is what you use in nuclear weapons. And for spaceships. So it's, it's a really, it's kind of devious, but it causes serious harm when it's spilled. You know, and they haven't, they haven't really put any science into how do we stop it. They go on the cheap all the time. That's why they had to close down uh, San Onofre last year. Because they... Can you imagine this? Southern California Edison bought a multi-million dollar piece of equipment to replace a faulty piece that they, the NRC had required that they replace because it was old and falling apart. And so the NRC faulted him and said, hey, you have to replace it. 
they bought a piece that didn't fit. And they were just going to bang it into, into place. For real. And it's sitting right on a, new, on a fault line. And so there was, you know what made, what spilled the beans, what really got the ball rolling to close it down? Was somebody on the inside leaked an inside report to somebody on the outside who sent it to Barbara Boxer. And that's how it got stopped. But I, personally, as an American, I want us to just be honest adults. Just, just, yeah, that'd be nice. yeah. you know, just stop. Stop with the bullshit. We're adults. We can handle the fact that we're completely screwed in the nuclear scene. We know we are. Anybody paying attention, I mean, it's a pretty serious, I mean, to me, I view uh, Fukushima as almost an extinction level event if they don't stop it. I mean, the planet cannot sustain five core nuclear meltdowns. And that whole business, I think you've seen them, we're moving the rods for number four. Let me tell you what, they're not moving no rods in number four. There's no rods in number four. Go take, there's a really good uh, website, it's a brand new website, but the guy got all from the EPA, all of their photos to show what happened, what actually happened, and then he compares it with like what they're trying to tell us. It, the lies are just astounding. Uh, it's called, you'll remember this, the nuclear proctologist. Nuclear proctologist. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Catchy little phrase. Yeah. The nuclear proctologist dot org. Okay, I remember that. Yeah, my name's Lonnie Clark. I'm with the Post Ignorance Project. Okay. Awesome. So, I'm Lonnie. gonna be out here. I'm gonna finish painting my sign that says, break ranks save lives because I want these people to start breaking ranks and demanding the truth. <laughs> uh, awesome. Okay. So. We, were just, we saw your sign. We were just curious about yeah. it. So. How do you feel about I mean, this reactor? I think it should be shut down. I think all nuclear reactors need to be shut down yesterday. I think they're a, a complete threat to life on our planet. Look, if we shut them down today, it's going to take 35 years to shut them all down. You can't just like flip a switch, oh, they go off. We're not, I mean, even in San Onofre, what they've discovered is San Onofre, the spent fuel there, is the most poisonous, toxic thing ever created on our planet. They cannot even begin to touch it for 35 years. If they turned it off, they have to cool it for 35 years before it can be moved. So let's cross our fingers and hope we don't have an earthquake. I mean, for real, this is how... That's the other part. I don't know if you know about the nuclear power plants. Do you guys know about nuclear? Uh, a little bit. Yeah, Do you know how many nuclear power plants we have? Uh, I see about 100. Yeah, about 123 or something like that. All of them, if you want to find, it's kind of ironic, I swear to God, even the ones on the East Coast that were built before they uh, understood seismology, they're built on uh, earthquake faults. Even the ones in New York happened, they were built before they even had the technology, but they happened to build it on top of an earthquake fault. It's like. Yeah, it, sucks. That's bad, it does that's suck. Placement, huh? yeah. And actually, you know, remember last year with that Hurricane Rita? Last year when they had Hurricane Rita? Yeah. Oyster Creek came within six inches of having a nuclear meltdown. Hmm. Six inches. If the water would have seeped up six inches higher, we would have had our own nuclear meltdown on the East Coast in New Jersey. It would have been super, super, super bad. And with the weather changing and the things going on that are happening, it's, that's why I say we need to shut them down now and figure out how to protect them from the onslaught of the weather. That's like our primary, that's my primary thing, because we know we have to shut them down for 35 years. Yeah. I mean, well, okay. we know that. So, so that's, that's a possibility. If you shut them down, that's, isn't it like 20% of our energy? No, no. It's no? less than 6%. That's part less of their lies, too. So, so... It's that's so part of the lies. So what do they make that 14% then? You know what they make? They make a boatload of money. Billions. Do you know because of the Price-Anderson Act? Okay, yeah. you're aware of what happened. You know the Price-Anderson Act? Yeah, I it, out. it keeps any accountability, like up in Hanford. Bechtel is supposed to manage the waste up there. Twenty years ago, they were ordered by the government because some scientists had a really brilliant idea. Build trenches, lay the nuclear stuff, triple line it with this stuff that keeps the nuclear stuff from going into the ground, and spread it over a larger p area so that it'll cool down faster. It's supposed to be really awesome, cut the time in half. Bechtel decided to save money and they didn't line it. Forty miles of trenches, they just started dumping nuclear waste into the trenches, directly into the dirt. And now, guess what? It's seeping into the groundwater. It's like a hundred feet away. If they don't fix it, the groundwater to Seattle and Portland is going to be contaminated. Hmm. Like, the like, whose brilliant idea is that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, well, it's about lying. It's the nuclear lies. This is why I came up with this phrase. When Because it's scientists who support the lies. It's like Catherine Hicks.
probably uh, at o Oregon State University saying, there's no more radiation, you're not going to be harmed. The people in Fukushima, they're getting the, maybe a banana a day, maybe a little bit if you were in direct lineup, but it's not that bad. They completely, well, they also deny, you know, the Fukushima 50, they all died. They denied they all died, those 50 guys who kind of yeah. saved the planet, essentially, <laughs> what they did, you know. I mean, and the general manager there, he died of esophageal cancer, what, a year and a half after the Fukushima, and they're saying it wasn't caused by Fukushima. Hmm. Okay, like they want to just continue lying. I'm going to stand in the street and hold a protest sign. <laughs> <laughs> the bottom line is like, what other power do we have except the power of the voice? And really, it's not really my future, it's you guys' future. Like, something happens. I mean, do you know what happens to men when you get mild level, regular radiation on a regular basis? Like, low level radiation on a regular basis, pretty clear significance that it causes sterility at a minimum. And well, three, it takes you, three generations. I heard that we receive radiation every day. From on, if we just from natural so like natural sources like the sun or from what's coming from this bullshit? Okay, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> Look, okay. Okay. we do get radiation. We do get natural radiation, but our bodies can manage natural radiation. What we can't manage, and we do have levels of like right now, we have levels of radiation in the air from World War II and from the bombing in the 50s. We have that. In fact, they lean on that to make their lives because they can't really tell because. There's so much plutonium and strontium, and there's already stuff in the air. So, like, if you test markers, like the fish, you've heard about the, the tuna fish in the ocean. 100% of the tuna fish test positive. 100% of the tuna fish test positive for cesium-134 and 137, which are two nuclear radioisotopes marked specifically from Fukushima, so we know they're getting poisoned. Now, what these people are saying is those are short-lived nuclear isotopes. One lasts two and a half years, one lasts, I think, 35, but they're not... You have to have it on a regular, regular basis for it to really cause you harm. Where the lies begin is where there's cesium, there's plutonium. Where there's cesium, there's tritium. And those things are known to cause direct effects. Um, in fact, there's a guy that I have been talking to who lives up in Corvallis. He's creating a plot chart. He had this really brilliant idea. He's kind of a scientific guy. He must work for somewhere around here, but anyways. Um, he's creating a plot chart from 2011, from January 2011, through 2015 of, of the universities along the West Coast. And he's plotting the levels of heart attacks among the athletes. And he said you would not believe it. After about six months after the uh, accident, the levels are just spiking because that's what happens. The cesium and plutonium goes, I think it's plutonium, goes straight to your heart muscles. And they drill like little tiny holes and it weakens your heart. And so young people are especially affected. And they run out and they're breathing it and then they just die of a heart attack. And people go, wow, there's an increase in heart attacks among young men. I wonder why that is. Well, this is where the nuclear liars come in. They don't want to have any culpability because if human beings knew what nuclear did, we would demand it ended right now. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's frankly, it's an arm of the industrial military complex. I mean, that's the only reason that we need nuclear. It doesn't provide us enough energy, and it causes us substantial harm. I mean, and the uranium mining, just to get the nuclear power stuff, the uranium mining is excessively toxic. I mean, there's a, really, there's a couple of good websites besides e and &E News. Um, you can go to, um, let me give you, I'll write down my card. You can go uh, to um, Radchik. Um, she's, she's doing a lot of studies. And it's, it's really interesting because there are scientists now speaking out. Seriously hardcore speaking out. Because we're, not, we're, we're past the point where we can just play around with this anymore. It's getting really serious. I mean, there are children dying, hundreds, the, the mayor of Futaba c came out and he went to Europe. He would be arrested if he went to j back to Japan, but he basically said he had to start speaking out because hundreds of the children in his village died of heart attacks. And he was told to keep his trap shut. Wow. That's seriously That's, bad. That sounds horrible. Yes, it is. Would you feel better if like, the nuclear industry was more transparent about their activities and their information? Well, they can't be. Uh. 
because there's no good news. They have to twist it. That's the point, is they can't... That's what I thought. You know, I never, before Fukushima, I had no... To be honest, I lived right next to San Onofre most of my life. I'm from California. I had no idea it was even a nuclear power plant. I just figured that was some kind of military installation. Like, that's how completely unconscious I was. I was like, huh, oh, that's an interesting looking building. I wonder why it's round. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, doy. Talk about post-ignorance. I'm the perfect child for the post-ignorance project, right? So, so, but I think now after being involved with this for maybe two years, I mean, to be honest, I'm shocked. My name's Lonnie. Okay. I'm, I'm going to post these videos up at Nuts for Art. I'm posting this up. Oh, okay. And actually, you guys might have been videotaped. Do you want me to delete that? I don't mind. I don't mind. Okay, it's, good, I, because, I I, you know, it's interesting to see people engaging me and talking with me, because... I was, I, honestly, it was, I was curious about your science. Yeah. Why, I, why I said this? Yeah, I was just wondering. Yeah. Yeah. So, because good. scientists are lying. Yeah. I mean, and it's not just the nuclear, this is the hard part, it's not just the nuclear industry, it's everything else. Like, we live in a culture where scientists are paid boatloads of money to lie. And really... It sounds horrible. It is horrible. And you know what, like, you know how easy it is to get into that? What if you guys got a degree from the University of, you know, Oregon State University and somebody offers you $175,000 to work in their lab and then they say, oh, we're not going to test for that, we're just going to test for this. And you're going to go, yeah, but really, how could we be conclusive? Well, we're just not going to test for it. The study doesn't pay us to test for that, so we're just not going to test for that. That's how easy it is. And you're living a great life. I mean, 180 grand, 200 grand a year. Okay, I'll go to work and test for what you want me to do. Yeah. How simple is that? You see what I'm saying? Well, I'd like to think that I would have better mor morals than that, but I, I guess I don't really know. You know how tested, easy right? it is yeah. to, yeah. like, don't twist? Don't yeah. I mean, that's what... W this is why I decided to stand here on a Friday afternoon when these people are getting out of work on Friday. Mm. <laughs> because and when I come back, it's going to say, break rank, save lives. Because we need them to start speaking out and really telling the truth. And in terms of transparency... If you really study the real facts about nuclear, there's nothing really good about it. And it offers so little, but what it does offer is war machine material. And it offers control because people are scared shitless of it. You know, you tell somebody not to eat fish, and in fact, I'm going to say that to you, don't eat fish, nothing out of the Pacific Ocean, and in fact, don't even eat the salmon. Hanford, around where Hanford is, the river's freaking yellow. People get sick. If you were to go to Hanford for a week, you'd come back and have a cold for three weeks. Hmm. That's mild level radiation. That's horrible. This last year yeah, up in Washington, 30 babies were born with encephalitis, with their brains half made, right? And that is a direct link to nuclear radiation. We've known that for a long time. That's what it causes. And the EPA came out and said it's not related to Hanford. They're just seriously hardcore lying because I, I understand why they feel compelled to lie. I mean, because if people knew, they would be really pissed off. Like, I mean, people were like, what do you mean you're putting our lives at risk? What do you mean it's going to take 50 years to shut these plants down? Like, really? I mean, my sisters live in Pennsylvania. My one sister lives around three nuclear power plants. I mean, yeah. Everybody in her little nursing home is super sick, can hardly walk, don't have energy. Mm. You know, how many people do you know that have cancer? Uh, one. Everybody knows somebody with cancer? Yep. And you know what? Like, fortunately, they are figuring out ways to stop it, but not fast enough. People are dying of cancer. Yeah. And my question, my brother has cancer. He got it from, the, I'm sure, from the WIP, the WIPP. Mm. He lives right downwind of WIP, maybe 100 miles away. And within three months of the accident, he got cancer. And they cured him pretty quick because they found it. And then another month later, it came back. And then they cured him pretty quick. And two months later, he got it again. Sorry to hear that. That's tough. And he, you know what? He does not want me to talk about 
nuclear radiation. He doesn't want to hear about the whip plant. He doesn't want to hear that he should move away. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to hear to eat organic. And that's the other thing. Eat organic and stay off the chemicals. Like only eat. And especially men. Men are really sensitive to the, the chemicals. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you can find that out. There's a really great book called Healthy Healing and she talks about that. Okay. But that's one of the reasons why men start losing their hormones at 40 because they're eating all this chemical food. There's been, a, if men just got on organic food at 40 years old and stopped all the chemicals, they'd have normal hormones until they die. Huh. But it does something, men are super sensitive, as you know. You know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You are, I know, I know you are. You act like you're not, but you no, really, really are. are right? I know, I got that scene. Why do you think God made women have the babies? <laughs> I I know. Yeah. <laughs> we wouldn't have any problem, but I mean... Well, we better get going. Well, it's really Thank you very great. much. It was good to meet you. What's Thank your you. name? My name is Jordan. Hi, Jordan. What's your name? Griffin. Hi, Griffin. Thank I you will... for engaging me. Yeah, absolutely. Let's and look this stuff up, and around. you can contact me, and actually, Kevin Blanche is my partner. He's actually the guy who invented the Post-Ignorance Project, and we do actions. We're like, we're going down to the USS Reagan. We're going to sit in hearings. You heard about those guys? Mm -hmm. yes, but we're going to go to those hearings in San Diego this month to support our soldiers. Cool. Because the government is denying that Fukushima harmed them. Like, really? Yeah, interesting. It is interesting. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you guys.